Grail spacecraft are extremely rugged, and that comes from a couple of reasons. One is they're quite small, and there's not a lot of excess volume inside. They're a little bigger than a, a, a washing machine, basically. Um, it's kind of the same size and shape. Because Grail is a mission that will investigate the gravity of the moon, our observable are the gravitational forces acting on the spacecraft. As a result, any forces we consider non-gravitational become a problem, so we need to minimize those. You can imagine anything that moves, anything that can change, uh, causes perturbations to the collection of the science data. So we've purposely built these spacecraft to not move. The joints are all clipped together, they're bonded together where appropriate, and produces a small, very structurally sound and very low coefficient of thermal expansion. The GRAIL mission is happening at the right time, at least um, from a component standpoint and from an infrastructure standpoint. Every satellite that we've ever designed, ever sent into space, we've learned from those satellites how cold is it going to get, how warm is it going to get, for how long, do our components work properly in the vacuum of space, are they going to be able to survive launch. We've essentially stood on the shoulders of our predecessors to basically use component heritage that's still recent enough that it's you know, usable and applicable for a space mission. Anytime you can use components from a previous mission that have been tested and proven, it reduces risk and it helps your program be successful. The spacecraft itself is a single string mission, which basically means it doesn't have redundant components. Many of the NASA missions have fully redundant subsystems and systems so that if a component suffers a failure, you swap to the redundant unit. From the inception of the GRAIL mission, we've decided that it was acceptable to use single string components for two reasons. One is the short duration of the mission. And secondly is the high heritage of these components, which have actually flown in deep space and in much harsher environment than the moon. The computers and avionics on board are part of what we call the command and data handling subsystem. And that is heritage from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, also known as MRO. What we've done is we've packaged several boxes, several components from MRO into a single avionics unit. The solar cells and the batteries used on the GRAIL spacecraft are the same models were used on the Phoenix Mars lander. And since they survived the harsh environment on the Martian surface, we knew they'd be more than adequate for use on, on GRAIL. We have a telecommunications subsystem. What that is, is basically the two-way radio. What we've done is used a Genesis derivative uh, for the transponder and for the antennas. By learning from all the past missions, we can incorporate all that information into our new mission and make sure that our mission goes off successfully. Because the lunar environment is a lot more benign than Mars, then components that have flown and functioned successfully on Martian missions give us very high confidence that they will perform well for GRAIL.